First time Flynn Dawson's been late for lunch since that young wife of his had a baby. Joe Wilson, the head bookkeeper, told me this morning that there's a lawyer down here from New York to put this mill into a steel combine. It'll make Flint a millionaire, Joe says. A millionaire? Can you see that? Flint ain't interested in nothing but his wife and that baby and this mill. A million is a lot of money. This combine will be a hundred million dollar corporation. And we hope Mr. Dawson will accept the office of general manager. Personally, I'll be guided right off Mr. Dawson thinks should be done. You've been rather quiet, Flint. What do you think of this merger? Well, as I listened to Enright, I kept thinking, the whistle has blown for lunch. Let's get this done in the minutes, Joe. If this merger goes through, the bankers and promoters whom Enright represents will pocket between 15 and 20 million dollars. Gentlemen, my clients will not pocket them. Just a moment, Enright. I'm particularly interested in the large block of stock which is being bought on the 20-year plan by the employees of this mill. All stock will be traded in for stock in the new corporation. Yes, and when the water is squeezed out of the stock of this new corporation, it will shrink like a bag of cottage cheese. Well, I'm late for lunch, gentlemen. I move we adjourn. Take the motion. Wilson, have several copies of the minutes made for Mr. Enright. Yes, Mr. Marley. Well, I told you what Dawson would do. Yes, but you didn't tell me that you were going to flop over to his side. I agree with Flint absolutely. Hmm? On the record. Oh. Uh, I wanted to appear in the minutes that way. I have a check for the amount I mentioned two weeks ago. But remember, before I close this deal, I want the rest of the money and a written agreement as to the stock. All right. You'll hear from me shortly. Yeah, that's what I want. Yes. What got you so late, Flynn? Uh, had one of these up in the director's room. <laughs> Hard boiled. <laughs> I bet you swallowed him whole. <laughs> Bad egg. <laughs> Vivian, well, this is Jim. Did you talk to Flint? Yes, I, I told him I couldn't stay here any longer. This gloomy house and those terrible mills in the city with Jim, I'll go mad. It's Flint's chance to make a fortune. You can have everything. Live where you like, travel. Steel is in his blood. Flint is steel. But I'm not. Talk to him again this afternoon. Put it to him squarely. It's all so hopeless, Jim. But drop in tonight and we'll talk things over. All right. Goodbye. Have Joe Swan report to my office at once. Who did you want? Yes, Swanson, one of the crane men on the night shift. Yeah, you offered you a million to sell out. You ought to taken it. No, I have plans of my own. The time you boys are finished paying for the stock you're buying, is it going to be the biggest steel mill in the country? In the meantime, these dinner bales are going to remain full. Uh, come on, boys. It's time to get back to work. But you were drunk again last night. Who said I was drunk? Then? I had a drink, but I wasn't drunk. I handled the crane all right, didn't I? Yes, but supposing you were to pull the wrong lever. You might drop a ladle of metal onto some man walking on the floor below. And himself is on the floor a lot of the time. Maybe he'd give me another chance. Hmm. Flint? And he's against a man as that man's finished. I'm running that crane tonight, ain't I? And it's your last night.
now. My God, his leg. Contract should have come in for six forty-eight ton girders. Yes, it came to the office yesterday. Oh, good. Uh, these uh, government contracts, Jim, give them precedence over everything. I use the finest steel. It may mean the lives of men. Yes, John, I understand. I must get back to the middle. The quickest way for you to get well is to stop thinking about these yeah. things. Yes, <laughs> it's good advice, but hard to follow. <laughs> you can rely upon the men at the mill. Mm. You yourself trained them. And Vivian, she's proving quite a businesswoman. Mm. Well, you and you and Joe Wilson take care of her. Mm. She's uh, more capable than you think. I've had power of attorney drawn up so that she can sign papers that require your signature. Oh, oh. It would be excellent training for her. Good, yes. Oh, yes. it will help to distract her mind and give her a deeper interest in my affairs. Mr. Morris, this won't do at all. The hospital isn't the place for iron and steel any more than the steel mill is the place for rest and quiet. You're quite right, Doctor. I'm sorry. I'll not be responsible for his condition if this keeps up. Take his temperature, please. Goodbye, John. Well, then. Oh, Doctor. I suggest you give orders that he's to attend to no business whatsoever and seize no one, with the possible exception of Mrs. Dawson. Yes, yes. When will I be out of here? If you obey orders and forget all business worries, we'll have you back in your own home before the new year. So you're beginning to face facts. Flint thinks more of his mill than he does of you. I'd like to take you away from here. You don't know what you're saying, Jim. But I love you. If he doesn't love you enough to take you away, then... Will you come with me? To go away with you? No. No, it's impossible, Jim. We're the only reason, Jim. But there's another. It's all so hopeless. But I love you. Please. I... Dawson's called to take me home. I'm sure she'll be here a little later. But remember, another month in bed after you go home, the doctor's orders. Oh, I suppose so. I suppose so. You. Huh. Oh, uh, Mr. Enright has gotten permission from the doctor to see you. Huh? Enright? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, show him in, please, nurse. 
Hello, Enright. Hi, <clears throat> Sit down. Oh, thank you. Last time I saw you was the day this happened. Yeah. Today I'm being moved to my home, and in a month's time I'll be at my desk. Well, the matter I've come to see you about is urgent. Well, it's about that merger. My answer is the same today as it was three months ago. The merger was put through six days ago. What? Impossible. My proxies, my, my own stock. Your proxies were revoked a week ago and your stock purchased by my client. In October, you executed a general power of attorney. Yes, to my wife. Well, no doubt she acted for your best interests in selling your stock. That is, I assume you will never again be able to attend the business. Your assumption is wrong. Well, I'm not here to argue. The check paid for your stock was endorsed by your wife and deposited in her account. <coughs> if there's any irregularity connected with this, I shall, of course, at once take steps to protect my client. What steps? If necessary, the detention of Mrs. Doss. Detention? Ridiculous. Why, well, she's calling for me here today. Well, I've been informed she's sailing for England today. Nurse, please telephone my home to see if Mrs. Dawson has left to the hospital. Yes, sir. For the protection of my clients, I have prepared a general release. If you care to sign it, otherwise I shall be forced to take steps against Mrs. Dawson. Well, can you tell me where we can locate Mrs. Dawson? Thank you. Goodbye. Has Mrs. Dawson left for the hospital? Mrs. Dawson left the city last night with your daughter for England. It uh, may interest you to know that we propose following James Marley's plan for a gradual expansion of the Dawson Mill. Uh, sorry the industry has lost you. Good day. She couldn't have known what she was doing. She was very young. Younger than I by 15 years. Come in, Joe. Glad you're here. Why haven't I seen you during the past two months, hmm? Mr. Miley said that no one was to see you, sir. Doctor's orders. about the merger. We just heard about it this morning. Last week we gave our proxies to Mr. Marley. We thought, or he made it appear, there was to be a fight. That he was going to act as you would have acted. Jim Marley. Is Marley at the mill? I understand he's sailing for England. As soon as I heard this, I went to the bank. I took the liberty of checking things up, sir. Yes? There isn't much left, sir. See that everything's paid. Yes, of course. We had a meeting this morning. All the men at the mill. And we want you to know that... 
Well, but you'll always be provided for. <laughs> Only part of me, Scribble Joe. Plenty left so I could take care of myself. <laughs> yes, sir, of course. <laughs> Come in here, please. I'm giving up this room. But Mr. Dawson, you can't. Some, some years ago, I, I endowed a ward. I want to be moved in there. You see, I, I, I want people to talk to. The boys won't let you do that. Move my bed a little, Joe, so I can see out that window. Yes, sir. That's right. Now, you remember the plans we talked over together for gradual expansion of the mill? Well, Marley stole them, too. The new corporation, they're carrying them out. Look out there. I, I can't see the mill for the snow. I can. I can see it. Not as it is now, but as it will be 10 or 15 years from now. When my plans are carried out, its capacity will be doubled. <laughs> You're mistaken, my friend. Soliciting arms is one of the oldest and most honorable professions. I live well. I save money. I get more out of life than most men. Well, you seem to have something which people with eyes seldom find. Happiness. <laughs> people with eyes see very little. I know all that goes on around me through my other senses. I offer you a partnership. I'll furnish the locomotion, and you furnish the vision. <laughs> Interesting, but for me, impossible. I have two serious purposes in life, Marshal. One is to find a woman and a child, to see they never want for anything. The other has to do with a man. Ah, but how will you accomplish these things? Mm -hmm. To take time. Ah, exactly. Throw in your lot with mine, and we'll wander until we find this woman and child, and the man. Is it a bargain? I assure you, my friend, you'll never have a dull day. John Flint Dawson? A beggar? <laughs> Unthinkable. <laughs> Thank you, madam. If you are blind, how did you know I was a woman? By the sound of your footsteps. Also a faint fragrance. If we lose one sense, nature generously sharpens the other four. Oh, I see. Copper, iron, coal. <laughs> you carry quite a list. Who publishes these little volumes? I write them and have them printed. Hmm, how interesting. Thank you.
What do these crowds remind you of, John? Hmm? What kind of beggars are you, refusing a reward? Well, I have something else in mind. During the past two years, Martian and I have come in contact with nearly 2,000 beggars. We have a plan of organization that will give them self-respect, do away with fakers, and be of some service to the public. Oh, how far have you got along with this organization? We have several hundred members. We selected members. Ah, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Vegans against the law. But our members operate under peddler's licenses. I sell sheet music. Ah. The point is that someday this organization will have 5,000 pairs of eyes, ears, or both. In every city, we're in direct contact with the underworld. We could be a great service in apprehending criminals. Mm, sounds interesting. I better take you into the chief. Come on. Things have worked out well, Gus. We now have 680 members, and we want you to join us. An organization in every city, a comfortable place to live. How much do you take in each day, Milgan? I average pretty well, three, four dollars. How much do you save? Never saved a penny in my life. <laughs> That's the point. Now, this is the proposition. Our organization is actually formed. It's in B. This is what we hope to do. You have a good business here, Sam. I'd like to have you on our finance committee. I'll take it over, John. How many members have you got lined up? Oh, over 1,100 in two years, with savings averaging around 270 a day each. That's $3,000 a day to be invested. More than a million dollars a year. It's getting into big business. <laughs> you bet. The men who join us will someday live in comfort. They'll share in big enterprises. Now, gentlemen, are there any questions you wish to ask? Yeah. Say, what's the catch anyway? <laughs> Sounds phony to me. What does this John Daniels get out of it? None of the money that you put in. No. But for organizing and overhead expenses, he will receive 10% of the profits he will make for you by investing your money. Oh. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think Mr. Daniels can explain this better than I. All right. Now, in the first place, I want you men to understand that not all of you will be allowed to join this organization. No. But... <laughs> Those of you who are physically fit to earn their living in other ways won't even be considered. There are now 2,000 members who are saving about $3 a day each. Last year, these savings amounted to more than $2 million. Within 10 years, I estimate there will be about 5,000 members. And, well, you can figure it out for yourself. That will mean a total investment of between 40 and 50 million dollars. He can at any time draw out both principal and profits. The benefits include club rooms, a decent place to sleep in, food at cost, medical care, legal services, the purchase at wholesale prices of the wares you pedal, the license fees, etc., etc. Now, to you other men, I have time to say very little, except that we have an employment agency, if you want to work. Oh, I see. How do we know our money? Boys, come here, I'll explain everything to you. 
It's really on the principle of the... Directors meeting. Big doings. With Jim Marley in control, this mill will soon be going full blast. Say, who is this Jim Marley? Uncle Joe, ain't Jim Marley the man that put this mill in the steel combine about 10 or 12 years ago? 15 years ago. I thought so. He saved it from the scrap heap, didn't he? Young fella, this was the best independent steel mill in America. And that was when Flint Dawson was general manager. Boy, Uncle Joe. Whatever happened to this Flint Dawson? He got hurt in a bad accident at the mill. After that, I heard he was killed somewhere in a train wreck. Us old timers have been thrown on the scrap pile. You can't put new wine into old bottles. Those olden boys were trained by Flint Dawson. They know how to make steel. He's right. But this is not a charitable institution. And if any of the directors are not in sympathy with my policies, they have, of course, the privilege of tendering their resignations. Gentlemen, I move we adjourn for the day. Second the motion. Second the motion. We're with you, Jim. All the way. Thanks. Good work, Jim. Oh, Wilson, my nephew, Lee Marley, is arriving today from New York. Should be here now. Have him shown up to my office. Yes, Mr. Marley. Marley, you're skating on thin ice. How so? Davis tells me that you and the crowd are unloading the stock that gave you control of this corporation. We'll buy it back at a lower figure. Thin ice. Another point. There are still three or four hundred old employees who through the years have been buying stock, voting stock, dynamite. When combined stock has been sufficiently depreciated, we'll form a syndicate and buy them out. They'd rather sell their right arm. <laughs> if they're out of work, they won't be able to make the payments. They'll have to sell out. Come in. Well? Mr. Marley, I hope you're off this policy of discharging the older men. My own notice came as somewhat of a surprise. Personally, I'm well fixed. I'm thinking of the old laborers. That policy has already gone into effect. Well, before you leave, check up on the stock being purchased by the employees. Where do you keep the certificate? In the company safe. Well, bring me the stock books. I'll go through them with you. Very well. I want you to be my uncle. A bachelor woman hater, but wait till he sees you. Not now. I'm going to steal your car. Right. I'll come and get you after I've seen my attorney. This is going to be the most exciting day of my life. You know, Lee, what I'd like? What is it? I'd like one of those little cottages we just had. I could put up your lunch every day. Cottage cheese and cottage pudding. And you cook? Oh, certainly. Are you sure? Well, I'm not too sure. I never tried. Are you willing to try? Of course. Promise to marry me. You want to marry me just for Michael King? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Well, a dyspeptic old man at 25. Now, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, don't you forget the call for me. I won't. All right, bye, dear. I'm going to make you secretary of this corporation. But you don't mean secretary of combined steel? Exactly what I do mean. I'm putting in young, vigorous men. Wait, I'll, I'll work day and night. <laughs> secretary of combined steel. I... Oh, there's a certain party that'll be mighty glad when she hears this. Yeah? Mm hmm Well, this position, Lee, is one of great responsibility. You'll have to forget about women. But you see, Uncle, this is, this is different. Why, we're going to settle down, even in a workman's cottage. That is, if she'll marry me. Pull up a chair, and I'll tell you about your new duties as Secretary of Combined Steel. I don't know. That's the only answer I can make to your questions, Joyce. But you do know, Scotty. You're the wisest man in the world. Joyce, darling. I'm your father and your mother and your brother. I raised you. And there isn't anything I wouldn't tell you. All right, then just answer me one question. Who is John Daniels? John Daniels is as much of a mystery to me as he is to you. More so. I hear from him three or four times a year. I receive sums of money for your support. I keep detailed accounts. Yet you've never seen the man? Twelve years ago, a man came into my office with a letter from John Daniels. I was to go abroad to an institution in Liverpool and arrange for the adoption of a six-year-old child. Her name was Joy McLaughlin. Since that time... Yes, I, I know. That's all I know. All right. If you can't tell me anything, I'm going to tell you something. I'm in love. This time it's the real thing. You're sure it's the real thing? Mm-hmm. We met on the boat just before it sailed from Buenos Aires. We were together every evening. Well, who is he and when am I going to meet him? A letter, Mr. Taggart, that's marked important for immediate delivery. Will you excuse me? Sure. For the first time after all these years, I'm going to meet John Daniels. What? Tonight. My name is Marchant. Mr. Taggart? How do you do? Mr. Daniel is waiting to see you. Mr. Taggart is here, John. Mr. Dawson. Come in, Scott. Glad to see you. Lots of things to talk about. you were killed in a railroad accident 15 years ago. Oh, I had some baggage on that train. The incident served a purpose. Helped to conceal my identity. Sit down. Thank you. The last time I talked to you was the time I advised you to take up the study of law. The time you made it possible for me to study law. Well, I figured that an honest office boy would make an honest lawyer. You proved I was right. Also, I liked your lack of inquisitiveness. <laughs> Haven't been from a lack of curiosity. <laughs> a strange story, Scott. Possibly you remember a man named Jim Marley. Yes. Yes, he was secretary and treasurer of the old Dawson Company at the time of your accident. It wasn't an accident. On the day I learned what Marley had done, I insisted upon being moved to the hospital room down for the destitute. There I came to know a blind man named Martha. An amazing story I've ever heard. Well, my estimate, through fortunate investments, we've almost doubled their savings for it. Financially. This must be one of the strongest fraternal organizations in the world. It is. You 
You haven't mentioned your daughter. Do you mind telling me how you found her? Marchand and I found Joyce in England just 12 years ago. found Joyce's mother on the morning of that day. According to this letter from Gypsy Jones, this is the street. We turned at this corner. Was the little girl with her? Yes, they were together. He followed them. He gives the number of the house. Why don't we go there? Well, this is not the kind of street she'd live in. Officers have been in and out all day. Miss Berger found the body she did early this morning. Suicide. That's what they say. But how do they know? A man came up to see her last night. Didn't anybody hear the shot? Woke me up. Then a truck went rumbling by. And I said to Miss Jones, I said... Here they come. That night we found Joyce in a small institution where her mother had placed her. You haven't seen Joyce since then? I've seen her at least twice a year. In order not to humiliate her, I've always remained in the shadows. As to Marley, I've bided my time. Now that time has come. And these are your instructions, Scott. Preliminary to the time when I should confront Marley personally. He succeeded in placing himself at the head of Combined Steel. Then he depressed the stock by selling it short. With the idea of buying it back at a lower figure for personal crooked profit. My idea and plan is to buy that stock quickly. I'll go over these instructions tonight. Use E.J. Curry and Company for your brokers. Marley tried to ruin Curry, and I want you to buy 10,000 shares outright. Give them to Joyce, so that if I'm beaten, she won't have to suffer. Start buying tomorrow at noon. I'll follow your orders to the letter. Good night, Scott. Good night, sir. Curry is buying combine in 5,000 share lots. Curry's back in the market, Mr. Marley. Yes. Curry must have learned your shot on combined steel. He's out to get you. Splendid. Sell for my account 5,000 shares each time the stock goes up half a point. But you're already short 15,000 shares. I'm going 40,000 shares short. I'll bring in the security before the market opens tomorrow morning. All right, goodbye. Now, oh, Lee. Yes, sir. Call a special meeting of directors tomorrow morning. You'll only have to notify these men. Anything wrong? Oh, no. An old enemy of mine named Curry has apparently secured considerable backing and is trying to get stock control of Combine. Any chance of his succeeding? <laughs> I'll have my heel on his neck within 24 hours. Oh, another matter. There are 400 stock certificates representing 40,000 shares of combined that Wilson failed to prepare for issuance. This evening, I'll help you go through them. You'll have to sign each certificate as secretary of the corporation. Yes, sir. I did have an appointment this evening, but I can break it. Oh, that's all right. Be back here at 9.30. That'll be time enough. Thank you.
Well, what now? Well, now I'll tell you why we're here. Scott Taggart lives in that apartment house over there. And this afternoon, he told me I must never see you again. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll talk to him about that. Now, listen, Lee. I have an idea it has something to do with my guardian. All my life, I felt a Ford. It sounds silly, but it's there. It's invisible, but it has a name. John Daniel. Oh, is that your guardian's name? Yes. And tonight, I'm going to see him, and you're going with me. That's why we're here. Scotty made an appointment to see him. I found that out. And we're going to follow him. Oh, now, listen, I'm no good as a detective. Shh, there's Scotty now. Hurry, before he gets out of sight. Let Scotty and lock the gate. Well, what's our next move, Miss Sherlock Holmes? Have you got the nerve to go through with it? That I have. Well, we can't go in the front way. Well, how about the back? I could put on a long gray beard. Have you got one with you? I'll grow one. Let's go over the top. Of what? Of that wall and through the garden. Oh, I can just see myself dangling by the seat of the pants from one of those spikes. Yeah, and you laugh. I promise not to laugh if you won't look when I climb. Hold everything. I've got an idea. Hold on. Come on. I'll go first. Catch you if you fall. Do you think you'll bite? I'll see. Nice doggy. Now, say, here's a watchdog. He's a committee of welcome. <laughs> nice boy. Come on. Come on, I'll catch you. Yeah, and if I miss, he'll catch you. You hold him. I'll get down there by myself. I hope. Oh, dear. Did it help? Come on, I'll help you. Marley is in over his head, 40,000 shares short. By tomorrow night, I'll make a pauper of him. <laughs> a beggar on the street corner. That's only the beginning. I have several accounts to settle. This is but one of them. He hasn't any legs. Oh, did you see the hate in his face? It frightens me. I'm not going to do any more of this eavesdropping. I'm going in there right now. No, you're not. I want to hear what they say. What I'm doing is in no way connected with this organization. I've waited all these years to be able to handle it personally. Tonight I'm resigning as head of this union. There's one thing to consider, Mr. Dawson. Not only are you going to crush James Marley, but others who are connected with him. Oh, they're all the same stripe. I didn't mind Marley's nephew, Lee Marley. Your daughter Joyce is in love with him. What? man's my father. Listen, promise me something. Anything, dear. Promise you won't say anything to your uncle till after I've had a chance to talk to Scott. I'll see him the first thing in the morning. I've had a chance to think things out. You 
You'll see how to suss them in now, Lidge. these men? Well, some have retired, but all either are or have been beggars. Marshal, <laughs> this is Scott Taggart. I met Mr. Taggart when he came last night. We welcome you, the first outsider to enter this room. I have an announcement to make. I want you and Taggart by my side on the platform. My friends, 15 years ago, I spoke to some of you on street corners and in the rooming houses of different cities. All that we planned at that time has come to pass. Three years ago, against some opposition, your finance committee wisely invested all funds in government and state on which you can draw to the full amount of your savings and profits. My own fortune has come through you, and what is left at my death will be returned as an endowment to this institution. I have fulfilled my part of the bargain, but now it has come necessary for me to devote my time to personal matters. Tonight, I am resigning as head of this organization. We won't let you resign. Don't walk out but, now, John. But you can't do that, John. No. I, I, I wouldn't leave you if there was not a man to take my place. He has been with me from the beginning. And I know no man of greater foresight. I suggest as my successor, not the blind Marchant, but Marchant, the man of superhuman vision. But we need both you and Marsha. So we need you very much, John. Say a word to the Marsha. I can't. I can't make a speech, but I can play something live. That's right. Anything. No. You're a playboy.
we going to do? I advise you to appoint a committee to see James Marley. Uh, uh, next on the committee. Let's all go in and see him. That's yeah, right. That's right. All right. All right. I don't believe I do that. All you want to know is that your stock is safe. It has been taken from the company's vaults. But perhaps Marley has transferred it for some good reason. Now get this straight. I left those stock certificates at your office merely as collateral security. There won't be any necessity for selling a single share. Before noon, there'll be a break in the market. Yes, yes, the directors are meeting now. No. Well, gentlemen, unless a miracle happens, Combine will be up several more points at the opening. And that's what they said, eh? That's what my broker said. Uh-huh. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm by it open four points up from yesterday's closing. Well, that about wipes me out. I can't hold out much longer. We're all in the same boat. We're licked. Crane is proud of outsmarted you. Well, what are we going to do? What do uh, you suggest? Cover as quickly as we can. You turn tail, I see you take plenty of medicine. But Jim, we can't hold out much longer. You can hold out for a couple of hours, can't you? Then what? Combined will then break five, ten, possibly fifteen points. Curry and his crowd will run to cover. How are you going to break the market? There's a quorum of directors present. Several have failed to show up. We can proceed without them. Everything will be regular on the minutes. And after that? For the first time since Combined Steel was organized 16 years ago, it has become necessary to pass the quarterly dividend. Oh! <laughs> Fine. I have to hand it to you, Jim. <laughs> you certainly have outsmarted Curry. You car. certainly have. Gentlemen, well, let's get busy. Mine has dropped two more points. I think it's 57 and an eighth. Well, John, as I pointed out some 15 years ago, soliciting arms is both an ancient and honorable profession. Well, <laughs> I'm led on alone in this. But you're not. Huh? We are together, as we've been in everything else. What do you mean, Marshal? For the first time in my life, I bought stock, combined steel, on margin. Marshal and I are in the same position. Everything we have, Mr. Dawson, came through you. You too, Taggart? I bought combined yesterday at 63. We'd better both sell out quickly. Put in your orders. We'll put in our orders to sell when you put in yours. Well, they'll wipe you out. Marley and this crowd are selling short the stock of a corporation they themselves control. Now they've past the quarterly dividend for no other reason but to still further depress that stock. Marley personally has gone further. Last night, he stole a large amount of stock from the company's vaults. This morning before the market opened, he put it up as security. That stock didn't belong to him. It's been purchased by the employees of the corporation. Marley can be sent to the penitentiary for that. I have another thought in mind. I'm going out to Marley's office. What is it, Mike? Joyce! Joyce! I just heard what happened. Lee Marley telephoned me that his uncle's gotten the best of you. I came to tell you that I helped him. I didn't tell Scotty, but I sent the stock that you gave me to Mr. Marley this morning before I understood it all. Oh, you mustn't worry. I'll see that you never want for anything. But that isn't what I came here for. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been so ungrateful oh. after all you've done for me. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Come, come, no. I don't mind being poor. I don't mind anything now. <laughs> Sure. America.
kill his half. Combined is going up. Orders are coming in from all parts of the United States. What does this mean, Marchand? Haven't any idea. Have you been using the funds of the organization to help me in a personal fight? Why, no, John. Certainly not. What did you do after I left the club room last night? I telegraphed to the local headquarters in every city that you had resigned. Yes? And what else did you say? That you were going to be the head of Combined Steel Corporation. What? You old fox! You old scoundrel! Say, we've got to get down to headquarters. What's doing? Uh, John Daniels has been made ahead of Combined Steel. Everybody's buying it. Come on. And it's the wheel of ballot. Here, kid, let me see that paper. Keep the change, I'll be rich before the day is over. Thanks. Hey, Joe, come here. What's the trouble? Come on down to headquarters. John Daniels has been made head of combined steel. Chance to clean up if we buy the stock quick. George? Sad Sam. Yes. Yeah, I just heard. Buy me a thousand shares at the market. Get up, all of you! John Daniels has resigned. He's head of a steel company. Get down to headquarters. Everybody's buying stock! Here, here, I gotta go buy a... It's incredible. We cut all quarterly dividends. And people all over the country flood the brokerage houses with buying orders. Oh, boy! Did you hit that? Hey, 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 What do you want? There's a committee of workmen waiting downstairs. I haven't time for any workmen. But it's about some stock being held for them by the corporation. Huh? Oh. Yes, I'll... I'll have to see about that. Dawson. Dawson? 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 Sit down, Molly. You may tell the committee of workmen your uncle has stolen the stock they were buying. Oh, that's a lie. You can tell the committee that the stock will be issued when the, when the workmen finish paying for it. Mr. Wilson offered to pay the amount owing on his stock, but the head bookkeeper couldn't find the certificates in the safe. Yeah. Gentlemen, that's all you need to know. Except that before the market closes today, the control of combined steel will have changed hands. The dividends will be paid as usual. Now you may go. But, uh... nephew may stay if you want him. Wait outside for me. Sit down. Did you ever see that revolver before? I know. You bought it in Liverpool three days before Vivian was killed. It was found on the floor beside her. I sailed two days before she killed herself. You sailed several days after her death. But the records of the steamship company... The records of the company show that you booked passage. But the purser's report shows you did not sail on that boat. You killed her. I didn't. I didn't kill her. She took her own life. I had no idea. John, I swear... That's what we're going to find out. If I turned you over to them, you'd be buried with a lot of metal into which they would throw you. 
Perhaps you'd rather die that way. The way you tried to kill me. Oh, I'll see that you leave here safely and go to England to be tried for murder. I'll give you five minutes to think things over. The point is, Marley, that you have nothing to fear from a trial if you didn't kill Vivian. Can't go in there, buddy. Is my uncle still in there? But the stock we issued to the workman was stolen. I'm as guilty as he. I signed the certificates. Your crime is one of ignorance. To have learned the steel business, young man, you should have started at the bottom, not at the top. Your sock is my fault, and I'm going to see that you don't lose a dime of your money. We don't care what you got to say. We want Jim Molly. Yeah, we want to see Molly. No way. <laughs> Close until next Monday. All former employees will then return to work. Your stock will be issued to you, paid for in full. Ha, 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 ha,